Hello and welcome back again. So, we have been discussing about uh, the first topic uh, among these uh, NDT topics that we have lined up for this course. So, this is uh, on dipenetrant testing that we have been discussing in last couple of classes. So, before we proceed today, let us uh, have a quick uh, recap what we did in the last lecture. So, in the last lecture, uh, we talked about uh, the cleaning methods for the excess dye. So, this is something that you need to do uh, before you apply the developer, uh, which is the next step that I am going to talk about today to ensure that uh, the surface is clean as it was in the beginning. Okay. So, we saw four methods of uh, cleaning the excess dye that is uh, method A. This one is uh, water washable dye. which uh, contains an emulsifier. So, this already has the emulsifier, you do not have to add the emulsifier externally like what you do in case of uh, method B and D. So, in case uh, of this particular uh, method, if the dye contains the emulsifier, then you can simply use water and wash it. Method B is an oil based uh, emulsifier and that is why this is also known as uh, lipophilic. So, in this case you use an oil based emulsifier to emulsify the dye and then uh, clean it with water. Third one was uh, method D. In this case you use a water based emulsifier. And that is why this is also known as a hydrophilic method. Okay. And then finally, another method I talked about uh, which was method C in which uh, you use a solvent to clean the excess dye. Okay. So, in this case you uh, simply take the solvent uh, on a piece of cloth or on a piece of cotton and then uh, you can uh, clean the surface. So, these are the different methods uh, by which uh, you can clean the excess dye and keep it ready for the next step. So, now if you go back and look at the different steps of this dye penetrant uh, testing method. First of course, is uh, surface, surface cleaning, then uh, you apply the dye, then uh, you allow some time for the dye to go inside the flaws if there are flaws and then clean the excess dye. This is what we discussed in the last class. And as I said before, uh, 
this would take the surface back to the initial condition. Okay, so, it should go back uh, to how it was in the beginning. Now, so once you do this, what you have is this. Okay, your surface is completely clean, there is no dye at all, but if there are flaws, then you know that this will be the dye will be inside the flaws. So, let us say there is a crack like this, so dye will be inside the crack. Okay. But now on the surface you do not see anything because you have cleaned up the surface. So, in order to make visible indications of flaws like cracks and other defects, you need to draw this dye out of the flaw and make it visible on the surface. right? So, you need something uh, which will draw this back to the surface and make visible indication. Now, if you remember uh, when I talked about uh, the early method in which case uh, they used to uh, use an oil as the dye and then after soaking in the oil they used to uh, apply some chalk dust. Okay? So, the purpose of using that chalk dust is to draw this uh, dye out of the flaws and make it come to the surface so that you can have visible indications of the flaw. So, that particular thing uh, which will draw the dye back to the surface like the chalk dust is known as the developer because this is going to develop the visible indications of the flaws. Okay. So, the fifth step now uh, once you have this uh, clean surface is to apply the developer and then wait for some time to see if you uh, have any visible indication. So, if there are flaws and defects and if the dye is inside them, this developer will have a blotting effect. So, by this blotting action it will draw the dye out of the flaws and make visible indication. So, in this case also as you could realize from this particular term you need to suck it out that means you need the same driving force which took the dye inside the flaws that is the capillary force. But in this case this capillary will work in the reverse direction. Okay. So, in the first case it uh, sucked the liquid inside the flaws and in this case the same capillary force will work, but it will suck it out. Okay. So, it will act on the opposite direction. And if you remember I said for this capillary force to act uh, you need some kind of opening, okay. some uh, opening on the surface through which uh, this capillary will develop. That means, uh, this developer that you apply on the surface. So, you can uh, spray it on the surface, but once it is dried on the surface then it should have some uh, porosity. Okay, so, it will provide a porous surface and because of the presence of these pores again the capillary will act on this and it will draw the liquid out of the flaw onto the surface. Okay. So, you need a porous uniform coating on the surface to be able to draw this uh, liquid out of the flaws onto the surface. That is why you use a suspension of white powder
in a volatile liquid. So, this is your developer. Okay. So, this is basically a suspension uh, of a white color powder in a volatile liquid and you can apply it uh, through a spray can. So, the moment you apply it, uh, this volatile liquid will quickly evaporate and it will leave behind a porous coating. So, that is the purpose of using this uh, volatile liquid so that uh, you can quickly dry it, that is the uh, first objective and then it will also leave behind a porous coating because as I said, uh, you need these uh, pores for the capillary to develop. Okay. So, that is why the developer uh, is a uh, suspension of uh, a white color powder in a volatile liquid. And this color is uh, chosen in such a way that uh, it is contrasting to the color of the dye. So, as you know by now, the dye color is uh, normally uh, red and that is why a white color powder is chosen as the developer so that you have a contrast. So, the moment uh, you apply the developer and it dries off. If there are flaws on the surface, you will see them, uh, see their indications as red lines according to the geometry of the, of the uh, flaw. Let us say if it is a crack, so you will see a red line on a completely white background. So, that will give you a good visibility because these two colors are contrasting to each other. So, it, you will see uh, Red color, in, red color indications on a white background. So, your visibility will be good and that is why these two colors are chosen as contrasting to each other. So, this is a porous coating. Which will help uh, develop the capillary in the reverse direction and draw the liquid dye out of the flaws onto the surface. And you can apply the developer in two ways. One is by spray, so you can have a spray can uh, which will contain this uh, white powder in a volatile liquid and the other way uh, you can do it is by immersion. So, this depends on uh, your requirement. Uh, if a spray can is sufficient for the part you have, then you can uh, spray the developer. On the other hand, if you think that the spray can is too small uh, for the part then uh, you can uh, immerse it in a tank which contains the developer, but either way uh, the function of the developer will be same. So, now we are in the fifth step. Uh, you apply the developer and then if there are flaws, you can see visible indications. So, the final step will be inspection. So, here are the six different steps of uh, this particular method, beginning from surface cleaning and going all the way to inspection. So, now you have applied the developer and then visibly you could see that uh, the dye is coming out and making red color indications on a white background as I said. So, you should take the part uh, to an uh, well illuminated area so that you know your visibility is good and then uh, observe it and see if there are any visible indications. Okay. So, this is how you do it for uh, normal visible dye.
which is also known as uh, type 2 dye. If you remember, we have talked about this. So, in this case, you simply take it uh, in a well lit area and then uh, see the visible indications which may be there on the surface. And in certain cases, uh, you can also use this type 1 dye, uh, which is a fluorescent dye. So, it contains a fluorescent uh, material. So, in this case, uh, the inspection has to be done under UV light. under ultraviolet light. So, you need to uh, once you apply the developer and all that. So, rest of the steps uh, will be same uh, from 1 to 5, but in the final step when you do the inspection, if you are using a type 1 uh, fluorescent dye, then uh, you need to take it to a dark room and then do the inspection and the observation under ultraviolet light. So, this contains a, a fluorescent material and when you expose a fluorescent uh, material to UV light, it fluoresces. Okay, that is why this is known as uh, fluorescent. So, UV light exposure of this uh, fluorescent material we limit uh, light uh, in the wavelength range of about uh, 520 to 580 nanometer which is in the range of yellow to green or green to yellow. Okay. So, that is why these fluorescent uh, lights most of the time you see as yellow or green color or something in between because when a fluorescent material is exposed uh, to UV light, uh, they emit light in the range of uh, 520 to uh, 580 nanometer wavelength which falls in the range of uh, green to yellow. Okay. So, this is how you will see uh, if there are defects and flaws, uh, they will glow, they will fluoresce uh, like a green color or yellow color light and you would be able to uh, see them uh, glowing in a dark room. Okay. So, this is how uh, this is done in case of uh, type 1 dye and uh, the visibility in terms of uh, how far uh, you see this uh, flores, I mean to the uh, extent, to what extent uh, this uh, flaws are uh, you know glowing, depending on that uh, visibility, uh, a sensitivity is assigned. And there are uh, four or five levels of uh, sensitivity depending on uh, how visible it is under uh, UV light. The first one is uh, level half, and the visibility in this case or the sensitivity in this case is ultra low. So, that means sensitivity uh, for level half is not good, in fact very low. Then you have uh, level 1 that is uh, low sensitivity Then you have level 2, which is uh, medium sensitivity. Okay. 
Next is uh, level 3. And in this case, uh, this is high sensitivity. And finally, you have one more sensitivity level which is level 4 and this is ultra high. Okay. So, this is how uh, the sensitivity levels are specified uh, for type 1 dye. Okay. Fine. So, let us uh, have a uh, quick recap about uh, this process about the steps uh, that you have in this particular process. surface uh, preparation dye application dye dwell time excess dye cleaning developer application and finally, inspection. Okay. So, this is a fairly simple method if you follow this uh, steps properly, particularly uh, this step. Uh, number 4 as I have told before also, you need to be little more careful in this case, so that you do not uh, remove the dye uh, from the flaws while removing the excess dye from the surface. Okay. So, if you uh, follow these uh, steps uh, methodically, uh, you would be able to do uh, NDT using a fairly simple uh, technique like this. This is all uh, we have today. So, I will uh, stop here today. There are a few more things uh, about this particular process uh, that we will see in the next lecture. Okay. Thank you for your attention.